hello everyone welcome or welcome back to the cosmetic science terminology episode two i also have a episode one of science co cosmetic science terminology which will actually be linked in the cards up above so it'll usually have a card slide up you could just click on and watch that if you have it and then watch this video or go to that once you're done watching this one whatever you choose These episodes are to help you understand what is used frequently in the cosmetic formulating um, industry or should I say world. If I'm looking down, I actually have notes that is listed. So every video that you see, I actually have a script um, that keeps me on a line so I'm not jibber jabbering and also not just talking to just to talk but to actually make sure I'm not wasting your time or your watch time in my editing time <laughs> before we get started I do have a ebook right now that is out for beginner formulators that would like to know more about how to formulate the behind the like the math stuff how to make certain products how to make a formula um i actually do have a dedicated ebook which will be linked down below and you can purchase that and we'll actually be having a sale pretty soon for black friday first word term is functional ingredients these ingredients provide primarily ingredients this can include cleansers so like surfactants um if you actually have not watched my surfactant video and want to know what a surfactant is or anything behind that aspect i do have it um i will actually have it linked in the cards up above and also linked in my bio so anything that's in the cards will also be linked in my bio if you just want to go to the bio as well body butters lotions deodorant curling custards shampoos mousse gel leave-in conditioners any cosmetic that you use, whether it's a foundation, mousse, gel, always have a functional ingredient in that product. Aesthetic ingredients. This is also in the formula to make it deliver better and also um, more, what's the word I'm looking for? Acceptable. Um, and so that's where you'll see aesthetic ingredients. So these are ingredients like solvents, um, pH adjusters, um, preservatives, um, thickeners, antioxidants, and so much more. As I am editing this video, um, some of the terms might seem very repetitive. Certain things might fall under certain um, terms. However, you can also, there's like a, I call it a category. If you read my ebook, you'll probably know that's what it is. And usually that is where ingredients can fall under the same thing. Um, and it's basically you decide i'm just putting them out there to like explain what it is and what it means just in case if you hear it however there is categories and um i break it down a little bit more in my ebook water and oil so you might hear it a little bit and i'm probably gonna have a clip come through soon after i'm done talking or whatever i don't know how i'm gonna edit this however um you might see something called water and oil and oil and water so water and oil are basically it's two phases that are coming together which will be a emulsion and this emulsion has water in it that's actually the droplets of water is going in and connecting to the oil and this is going to the consistency of that product would be very very thick and um rich um uh what else um i'm trying to think <laughs> brain brain news also the product will have a high high viscosity oil in water is basically oil droplets being dispersed into the water phase and so um you'll see like lotions it's like very like very thin that is an oil and water emulsion um 
and this has a, a very very low viscosity and if you don't know what viscosity is or emulsion you might want to go watch part two i'm at part episode one first and then come back here because you'll probably line it up so what we have right here is water and oil so basically these are water droplets Fake like this is the outside of oil. So these are the droplets that are going to immerse in the water is going to actually immerse into the oil. Okay. And now this is oil droplets in a water phase. Same as this one. It is going to immerse into the water or should i say emulsify into the water so this is water and oil so water and oil is going to be a thick consistency oil and water is going to be a liquidy type of uh product which i will actually show you so these are the two products that i have i have the oil and water right here that's a lotion and this is water and oil so even looking at the ingredients let's see it's a lot of oil at the top i mean what a lot of water is in there but it's a lot of oil and the top as well so if you look at the water and oil the viscosity is very high it's very thick you see it's very very thick okay and this lotion it's like watery and it's a high concentration of water both of them have the top ingredients of water but this has less oil in it than this so this is a oil and water because look now when you get this one and you put it on you see it's a very thick consistency and you see this this is kind of watered down also i hope you guys have your notebooks ready and writing these terms down and stuff because this can definitely help you you can set this up in your lab and be set for success you can also study it to make sure you know so when somebody's saying something you're like oh i know what they're talking about i know shampoo which is a high cleansing product that helps get rid of the dirt that's in our hair and the grime the oil shampoo is usually depending on the shampoos we're actually going to get into different types of shampoos in another video but not today toner and toner will be used to help tighten the skin to help make the skin feel refreshed and um lighten water alternatives so water alternatives can be from plant compounds such as like um rose hydrosols any like cucumber hydrosols or we can use aloe vera juice or um coconut water um so those are like water alternatives that we might want to use say if we have like a toner for instance and and I would want to use cucumber hydrosol because it has great softening benefits to the skin. And I want to give, um, give a toner that's going to soften the skin and make the skin feel soothed. I would put a cucumber hydrosol in there because of the benefits instead of putting water. Because even though water is a very good um, ingredient, however, I want to put something more that adds more oomph to my product, if that makes sense. Preservatives. So preservatives are actually used to protect our customers and also our ingredients from, um, it's actually to protect our products from growing any mold, yeast, and or bacteria. Um, and you might see it even in body butters or something because even though we might, our product might not have an aqueous phase, um, 
you're still putting wet hands into a product and you're contaminating the product. If you want to know a little bit more about preservatives, I do actually have a whole video talking about preservatives and when we should use a preservative. If anything is coming in, in contact with water, you need to use a preservative. Whether it's in the formula or whether it's out from a customer, you need to use a preservative. Additives, which is like a functional ingredient, but it's a legal, a legal necessity such as preservatives that is a legal necessity if they find out that you have an aqueous phase and you're mixing it with oils and it doesn't have a preservative you can get in some legal trouble because that causes um a lot of infection a lot of bacteria yeast mold um and it can get people really really sick or mess up people's hair or skin and that can get you in a lot of trouble so you just want to make sure you know what you're doing when you're formulating your product other ingredients that are additives are citric acid citric acid is used to adjust the product's ph because our skin and hair does have a ph also i have a video about that in the cards up above and will be in the description box vitamins like you might see um b5 uh biotin that might be in there things like that um or like you might see um hydros hyd uh hydros what's that proteins and stuff i can't even think of the product name so i'm just gonna say proteins um colors um might be added to it some people if mica powders if you are not so into the natural um product making or if you are you might use like beetroot powder or um some type of like spirulina or like uh, herb powders or something to add a little bit color into it. Homogeneous, which is something that is easy to spread out or easy, easily dispersed. Salt. Salt is actually a soap. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. I thought like, whoa, when I first learned about that, I'm like, salt is soap? What? Yes. Soap is a Salt, that is a fatty acid that's actually used to cleanse. So it can be used to cleanse our clothes, our skin, our hair, um, our um, surfaces. So yes, salt, salt is a soap. Yeah. <laughs> slip, the word slip. You might hear it, you might not know what it is, or you probably do, I'm not sure. Um, slip is used to add slipperiness and lubrication to um to a lot of our hair products for instance because that's usually where we add slip is into our hair products um especially our curly hair ladies or men um we might want to add like slippery elm or um certain things that can help add slip to the hair and you might see this in leave-in conditioners um conditioners styling products um deep conditioners and a big one would be detanglers that you would see um, that ingre uh, that in, which and they would also promote and market off of slipperiness, uh, slip, adding slip to the hair so you can be able to comb out your hair without any tangles, too much tangles, because you'll still have some tangles, but not as much as you would if you didn't have the product in your hair. Humectant which is an ingredient that draws moisture into the hair, the skin. Um, so a lot of that will be glycerin, honey, um, hyaluronic acid, uh, salicylic acid, and some other ones. You might want to look into some um, humectants and put it on a chart. We'll talk about charts and all that type of stuff later in another video because I definitely want to help people that um, would like to add charts to help them formulate because that I still need it to this day. Believe it or not, I still need it. You're not supposed to really remember everything like that is being taught in the formulating world. Some of your brain might soak it up and some of it you just have to look at paper and that's totally fine because formulating is a huge, 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 huge um, thing. Like it's a lot of stuff, a lot of words, a lot of ingredients, a lot of products. And we're just not gonna remember all of it. I would be lying if I say I remember everything. I re no. Sometimes I have to look through my notes and see what I remember. Trust me, you're definitely going to need um, 
some notes in a chart would be very great. Silicone, this is an ingredient that adds slip and it also is a great sensory um, fill for the skin. Um, we do have a lot of synthetic um, silicone, so if you're one of those that are organic plant-based uh, formulations, you might want to look into that but you also if you're big on the environment and saving the environment silicones is actually very threatening to our environment it's it, they call it it's damaging to the environment um so if you just want to look into that a little bit more to educate yourself on certain things um please do so and look into what you're getting um putting in your products and how you can help the ecosystem because we all should be ecosystem ecosystem too we do care about the ecosystem but we also care about our environment as well and this beautiful um earth that we live on or i should say planet that we live on which is called earth so we definitely want to care and be very um considerate of the earth and i have to tell myself having a business as well that as well um this also wraps up this video i thank you guys so much for sticking with me um and i have so many more videos to come i keep saying that but actually i'm really working on being consistent um i do miss recording youtube videos and talking to you guys and helping you guys out and your feedback really 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 touches my heart when i get comments and saying like certain things that i do help you guys with that actually makes me want to get up and record right now instead of being like kind of a little dazed and sad because we'll get into that another time but basically long story short is i put in a lot of effort and work into my content and sometimes when the views aren't right or when i'm not getting enough interactions it kind of discourages me a little bit because i spend days on um researching and editing i mean not editing but researching and writing scripts up and making sure my delivery is amazing before i even record a youtube video and then i record the youtube video i make sure i research the stuff that i want to show you guys and sometimes i write it out or whatever and it just doesn't go as planned or what i would think would go as planned so it just really discourages me but anyways make sure you follow my social medias which will actually be popped up on the screen and or you can check out the description box and click the link in the description box make sure you like this video make sure you subscribe click on that notification bell so you get notified anytime i post also comment a simple comment what you think what you would like me what you would like to see on this channel would be amazing um and also check out my ebooks also check out my soothing oat gentle soap um which is for the body and i'm pretty sure you would love it i've gotten so much feedback so much great feedback on this soap and i'm really really proud of the um growth in my brand and be being very mindful and just really really growing as a um, entrepreneur thank you guys so so much for supporting me and thank you so much for even watching this video all the way through and listening to me and um until next time i'll talk to you guys later bye